I think we'll go talk to Pat while he opens up. Now I've known Pat about five years. He's uh, he was a former professor at uh, university. Now this is Pat Toten. Hello, Mr. Patrick. Good morning. I was wondering we we're discussing with uh, the kids about capitalism, and I. Tell them about your operation here. Now we're at a tractor show. I'm certainly one of the largest in the country, if not the largest in the country. And uh, I'll just set it up for you here. You can get spots in here for fifty dollars, and you'll find everything from Corvettes to uh, a bag full of bolts. So you never know what you're going to see, which is why I guess. We're addicted to it, and I've seen Pat coming in here for about five years now. And typically, what he does, he'll arrive about oh four or five days before the show, and he goes around and he's buying these items, and then he'll resell them with the knowledge that he has on uh, antiquities and. It's uh, amazing what he picks up, what what uh, what comes to his eye. For example, we have uh, case knives. Now, most people, you know, case made such a selection of knives that most people will collect a narrow range of some type of case knife. Now, why did you pick them up, Pat? They're very collectible. Yep. And I assume you bought them out here from someone or somewhere. Somewhere, yes. And uh, uh, they got what they wanted for them. Absolutely. And you're going to resell them out here. And the, the, the price that you bought them for and the price that you sell them for in between is a profit exactly and uh, and that is capitalism at work nothing more than that just pure simple capitalism that's correct all right uh, what else have we got here that you're well we've got some collectible Garcia Mitchell now why is that collectible well it's very old it's not made out of plastic much uh-huh it's very dependable been around for years okay People collect them to use and just to, just to collect them just to have something. And you found out, how did you find out that a Mitchell, that Mitchell reel, was collectible? How, how did this just, knowledge... Just through questioning other people that had them for sale. Okay, all right. Now you've got some other items out here. Uh, you, you, you bought this hydrant. Now why would you buy something like that? Because of the few people would like to have that for their dog. Okay, all right. That's the others just for yard art. And a yard art, uh, and all you have to do is go someplace like um, oh Cracker Barrel to find out who the big buyers of this kind of thing are. That's right. All right. We have this caught your eye, and you bought this out here. I know. Yes. This uh, is the spins, and what in the world is that? You put oil and medicine in the trough. The hog, by its nature, will push against that. Okay. And it will bring the oil and medicine up on its skin, and that will treat it. The hog doesn't know that, but that's just what happens. It's a hog oiler. Now, and you're going through, and because you know what these things are, you're listing what they are, whereas when I, I can almost guarantee when you bought this, there was nothing on it, was there? A price, you mean? Yeah, a price or a uh, what it was. It was just sitting well, the there, The person probably. did know this time. They, the they did know. The person sold it did know. That's but they didn't have a tag with what? No. It, no. So, so you're, you know, you, you're putting a little moxie on it and... Uh, uh, giving people information, and that's nothing more than adding value. 
correct. Adding value. Now you've bought you've bought a pan here. Why this pan? It has an unusual logo on the bottom, which the seller said it was Griswold. I can't read Griswold, but I bought it because it was interesting. Okay. And it's actually a lid to a pot. Oh, that's it's, the lid. That's the lid. Mm -hmm. Oh, like a Dutch oven. I got you. Okay. And how do you use a Dutch oven? Well, you can put the roast beef in there, and potatoes and onions, and put it in the oven and let it bake for about three hours, and it'll be delicious. Or you could hang that over a fire. Absolutely. And uh, okay. Yes. Now you bought you bought a telephone out here. Now what, why would you buy this telephone? Turn it around here. He's because it's made out of aluminum and it will not cause a spark. And a spark is very bad in a coal mine. So it's so called this was a, a miner's phone. Now, this is a very collectible item I happen to know. And uh, a restaurant would like to have something like that on yes. their shelf. Yeah. Now out of all, you, you bought some vices. Why these vices? Because they're made in America, the two bigger ones are. Uh -huh. That Littleton Company is a very good name in vices. Littleton. High quality. High quality. Good jaws, not been used much. All right, and, and anybody could, especially in today's world with online, could go out, find this information, add value to whatever it is that they are targeting, buy things, resell them. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's nothing more than just classic capitalism at work. This, this, this item here, you told me was a bull blinder. Bull blinder. Now down below here, I, I, you can see that the, he can see the grass, but he can't see you to gore you. That's right. He has to be able to look you in the eye okay. to gore you, and this doesn't let him do that. All they can do is see the grass. Okay, now in the background they can see these, and I'm not going to comment on these because this is a, a deeply disturbed individual uh, Absolutely. That, that would get those. Now, you've got a collection of saws here. Why these saws? Because artists like to paint on these. Ah, oh, okay. And right. paint farm scenes, tractors. Hardly anybody is going to buy it to actually use. Yeah. Something to hang on the wall, paint, and make it look pretty. Sort right. of artistic. Okay. Okay. Um, you've got a collection of canes. Now these are these are works of art in, in and of their own right, and, and that's probably why you bought them. Is that right? Well, this is off of a, uh, a horse hame, a fancy horse hame made out of brass. A lot of them are just made out of iron, but people take them and put them on the end of the stick and make a walking stick out of it. And what is a horse hame? It fits over the collar, which I don't have one, but that's what you attach the chains to that come back to the plow or whatever you're pulling. Okay. Hams, you have to have the hams. All right, okay. Now, I backed up over this. This you bought yesterday, I, and we were working on it. Uh, you were working on it. I was uh, just looking at it. But this, we figured out, is the gun off of a fireboat and they would pull up by a ship that's on fire, something like that, and uh, and shoot water onto it. Now, that's a collectible. Very I don't collectible. Have to be very collectible. Very well, where are you going to get one? So, uh, okay, I didn't I didn't see you bring this in. What is this? What do we got here? Well, it's a it's a gas tester. A gas tester. And. I am not exactly sure of how it's used. As you right. can see the gauge pressure there, pounds, and if, per square inch or something. And I would assume that 
if this doesn't go down the road at this show, you will go home and you'll research that and figure out what it yes. does do. Yes. Like I've seen you do many times. As we come on around here, you have some pitchforks. Now, are these used for coal? Is this what you would use? No, this would coal? primarily be used for hay or straw, something, something sort of light like that you would need to be able to okay. stick your foot, push it down. Now why would you not use that for coal? Coal would fall in between. You need something with a smaller gauge for coal. All right. You want uh, the coal dust to fall through so you don't throw the dust in the boiler and have an explosion. Alright, so you would not use that on no, a train or anything? We could use these for uh, manure, okay. uh, leaves, just, just mulch your... in general. And why did you buy, well, you know, why, what got your eye about these? Because people are always wanting pitchforks like this to actually use. Okay, and you got $12, $7. Fifteen. Fifteen dollars. This one is for fifteen. What? Why fifteen on that one? Well, this one, the condition, it's bent right here. It's probably not the original handle. It's not real tight. So and these are American-made forks, I take it. Yes. Okay. But this one is low priced because it's welded together, and uh, it's not very collectible. And it's not very good quality. So this you, one is the best quality. Yeah, I see. It's made that. out of one piece of iron. Uh huh. Attached well. All right. Well, I never. Now, in your knife drawer here, I noticed you have some old bayonets from World War or those Vietnam. I don't think I have any from World War II, but these, from experts who told me these are from Korean up to Vietnam. Okay. All right. And they're collectible. Very collectible. Very collectible. They, okay. they want to put them on the end of their rifle. Yep. Exactly. And the little, this is where your barrel, barrel would go. Let's use this right. knife here. There we go. Okay. Let me just see, buddy. I just have to look at it first. Now, this is another form of direct capitalism. This is an opal. See, so we're just selling these out here open. These are sunstones. These are amethyst. Very cheap. But if we take those same opals and we cut them, use skills to cut them, now we have something that can be sold in this case a hundred dollars a carat. All right, so that 4.4 carat opal is now worth $440. The buyer who buys this, when they exchange money, doesn't mean the stone is worthless. It just goes with them. These will be worth money for all time as, as long as the stone lasts. They will have value as opposed to Possibly the uh, medium of exchange won't. Let me explain this. We took a rock, we cut it, and now we have something that went from a dollar in value to $440 in value. So we have over here what we got it for, picked it up off the ground for nothing, now it's worth $440. In between here is wealth creation. That's classic capitalism. What was the government's role? Well, the government, which we pay them for in taxes when the stone is sold, we pay taxes on that transaction. The government's role is to create a medium of exchange that simply makes the transaction between people easier so we don't have to barter or trade stones for cars or you know go through all those calculations and this is one of the services that we pay government for is to create a stable 
medium of exchange so these tra transactions can take place. That is capitalism. Now the profits from the sale of these items that we're creating, all right, it is up to us how they're spent, not the government, all right? That's capitalism. Here's another example you might not think of. This is uh, blackberry jelly. The blackberries came from the wild. They're simply boiled, added with sugar, and jarred into jelly and salt. All right? But we have to buy the jars. Now, if we buy the jars in bulk, we can get a, uh, a cheaper price and the jar manufacturer they simply take sand and in, in essence boil it put it in a mold and there's our jars now this employs many many people from the the people who make the jars make the lids to uh, the truck driver that transports it and then that's capitalism at work all right we're on the bicycle and we're gonna head down here I spied something earlier I want to show you be careful I don't don't kill us both here I think it's on, well, let's see, let's, I think it's on this row here. We have a store right here on Main Street at the south end of our uh, big food pavilion. And in that yeah, there it is. Also, uh, we have special shirts for this show, and a few left, so if you want a just about all of this these are being restored and there's machine shops here and all kinds of things that store everything from cars to uh, these old tractors yeah there we go now that is a case model D O for orchard tractor. Anytime you see any of these things, uh, tractors, cars, modern, ancient, whatever they are, I want you to think of iron sands because that's all they are. There's a pile of iron sand sitting there that was uh, formed, melted down, and coke was added to the iron to make steel, and then um, it was poured into molds and those molds were drilled into engines and thousands of people are doing this to make these tractors and finally sold and then used to take a bare piece of ground turn it into what we eat and of course all along the way all that stuff is sold many many times and uh, profits are made and people live off that and that is nothing more than capitalism. Now this uh, uh, Model D, uh, about 1975 or 6, there were uh, 49 D.O. Thank you, sir. Uh, you own this tractor? There were four young men laboring under a uh, light in a barn in Groveland, Florida. And they were converting this tractor from LP gas to uh, gasoline, back to gasoline. It originally had a big uh, LP tank right here and a pressure carburetor. Now, about they started about six o'clock in the evening and about oh six the next morning they had it done 
and those four gentlemen let's see one of them was um, Benson Hartle the other two were Mike and Roy Cosgrove and the fourth one was myself and it looks pretty much the same way it did as it did back then uh, it was it was this color flambeau orange but the wheels are the same let's see this gear shift knob came from a sunbeam car that I had it was just I just stuck it on there and uh, it's weathered the storm pretty darn good now we grew a crop of watermelons with it pounds motor company Hoyle pounds came up with the idea of the pneumatic tractor tire and he sold that to Goodyear and uh, they paid him a million dollars for it and from that he developed a machine line of machine shops that overhauled these and these would go run for 3,000 hours between overhauls and it'd probably grow another crop of watermelons today and that's a case model D orchard well, let's see if she runs We've got rain on the way. The show is kind of breaking up. Uh, we're four days later from when we last talked. And some things have left. And I see you bought some other things. Uh, was it a successful event? Yes, it was. And was it so successful that we're going to uh, contact the Secretary of State and uh, fill out the forms to issue a par value of stock, say nominal value of stock, say of a penny for well, 500,000 shares or so, open up on the over-the-count bulletin board and all that stuff so we can take the expenses off of our truck and uh, the gas expenses and all that kind of thing, or are we just going to stay a hobby operation? Going to stay a hobby operation. There you go. And according uh, to my CPA, that's the way to go. There you go. Now, in fact, what we've seen out here for these last four days, this is classic capitalism, isn't it? Yes, it is. Where this has been going on since the time of the pharaohs. Yes. Anytime people are making money and you know that sort of thing, and and the money goes to them, that is capitalism. Nothing more, nothing less. Exactly. Okay just simple classic capitalism now that we hear the kids say that capitalism is evil and you know all that what are they talking about in your estimation I don't know I think it's just a bunch of bleeding heart liberals wanting everybody to be the same without any ambition just everybody treated the same because capitalism isn't about equality is it no it's rewarding for those who work there you go okay Thank you, Pat. You're welcome.